Mi nombre es Milton. ¿Cómo estás? Ah, I love it. Ah, I love you so much. Asumo que te estás riendo de mí y no conmigo. Gracias. Back everybody, it's another episode of World One One. With me, as always, is the uh, my sidekick, Eddie Magic Head V. Yo 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 yo. Happy Fourth of July, everyone! Stop that! Don't ever do that again. You're too white for that. <laughs> I am not white. Well, I am suburban <laughs> some days. That is true. There, I, 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 I could tell you right now. Like there are some places that I get super suburban. I'll be like, hello. <laughs> Yes, yes. Everything is good. Can I help you? And then I see some crazy stuff and get straight ghetto. Be like, look at these, mm, these fools. Sit your tail down somewhere. Stop running. I get like that. So, uh, but oh, it, hello, everybody. <laughs> I am your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder, and with us for the first time, our very ever repeat offenders. I mean guests. We have with <laughs> us uh, Milton and Steve from AM2R. Yay! Uh, Hi, uh, thank you very much for inviting us. Oh, Good evening. Sure. Uh, so, Welcome, guys. It's, uh, it's a brave new world since the last time we talked uh, back in January. Oh, uh, changed so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So, you know, obviously one of the things that we wanted a, a chance to have you guys back on is to talk about, you know, the, the announcement, the news that came out of E3, in particular, uh, the announcement of Metroid Samus Returns coming up in just a few godly short months in uh, September. And, um, you know, we wanted to give you guys a chance to actually talk to somebody and kind of put your voice out there, because uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I've noticed a whole lot of uh, outlets, uh, you know, reporting on stuff that you guys have tweeted but nobody's actually talked to you guys we wanted a chance to you know give you somewhere to kind of put your thoughts out on the subject because we've seen a whole lot of uh <laughs> well strange reactions to the announcement <laughs> well let's give some, <laughs> let's give some headway um everybody uh milton and steve are the creators or fan creators i should say of am2r another metroid 2 uh remake and uh they work I great. cannot take that credit. I just helped. <laughs> That's why I said, Fred. Well, Steve helped. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he assisted. Um, they they made a fair uh, remake of Metroid Two, and uh, they released it to the world. It happened, and Nintendo hit them with a cease and desist, and they had to take the game down. So must have passed. Nintendo, like Larry said, announced Samus Return, which is a remake of Metroid Two. And um, that's where we are at right now. Um, so, guys, uh, Milton, I want to hear your thoughts first. Because uh, I know, Steve, uh, Larry, you probably ready to ask. But, uh, Milton, <laughs> what was your thoughts when you heard the news? Because I think, no, you, Steve, you you posted something. But I want to hear Milton's thought about this first. All right. <clears throat> first of all, for the record. I'm the guy that's created for making the game. Uh, Mr. Steve here is the guy that should be created for making it look awesome. Aww. So, um, things are very strange lately. Uh, we are suddenly in a world that has people that are not ashamed of being Metroid fans. And that's something that's uh, weird. We were this uh, strange forgotten fandom that was uh, casted aside. And... Uh, I had this uh, small mission of the give, giving people what they wanted. Now they're suddenly uh, giving. The, the, now they're suddenly the official product being released uh, in a couple of months, and that was that was what I actually wanted to do on the, on the first place. When I actually finished Zero Mission, I wanted to play something like that 
uh, with the Metroid 2 storyline. And uh, seeing that uh, it's going to be happening after so many years is uh, awesome. It's a relief. And uh, the trailer and the gameplay that was revealed in E3 uh, was much more interesting than uh, the reveal of Other M. We get to see much more, much more gameplay. We get to see how the design is, uh, where the design is being headed. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the guys at Mercury's team are very, very acquainted with the Metroid uh, franchise. Uh, you can see the design decisions they took, and uh, I'm fairly confident that they are going to be making an excellent job. All right. And Steve, what are your thoughts about it? It looks good. <laughs> really? <laughs> Man of a few Steve, words. You've definitely been a lot more vocal on Twitter on the subject than yes. uh, Milton has. Well, I mean, I'm better at writing things out. It's, it comes natural. <laughs> but, um, I mean, real talk here for a minute. I was hoping that the next 2D Metroid game that we got would be 2.5. And it is. And I feel that it It'll look better with the 3D. I watched the 3D trailer when they announced it on the 3DS, the little one that they got on the eShop there. Uh-huh. And from what I, from what I, when I first started watching it, I was skeptical because the I, the animations look a little bit janky in a few places, particularly um, when you get the when you get the space jump. I didn't notice any difference visually to indicate that you have that. Um, I didn't notice any wall jump animations either, and it looks like the game runs at 30 frames per second. So far, those are the only things that really concern me. Otherwise, I mean, I'm willing to give it a shot and see how it does, and I'm going to remain optimistic about it, and I honestly hope that it's better than AM2R. This is what we wanted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Certainly, there's a team of uh, very uh, experienced professionals uh, and the support of uh, Mr. Sakamoto, and uh, the original composers of Super Metroid. So it has the potential of being an extremely awesome game. Let's hope that's the case. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I will say to the 30 frames per second, I can't say that entirely surprises me, considering running on the 3DS with the 3D on, that tends to take a fair bit of the horsepower and the resolution out of it. But, um, I mean, no, I, I watched that same trailer too, and I... I liked what I saw. Uh, like you, I was a little skeptical on a couple of things that I saw. Um, the design of things like that gamma that they had in there looked... Just something about it didn't look quite as pretty as it felt like it should have. Well, it's, it feels it's, like uh, it's missing something. Yeah. It, it might be it, the poly count, you know. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, BC... Uh, motion going on on the background and yeah. that takes quite a lot of uh, polygons from the scene so yeah. maybe a little bit more detail on the foreground elements maybe and you it, you kind of there's... gotta you kind of gotta look at the difference between what they did with metroid fusion and to uh metroid Samus return because it looks like the graphic style of you know is different than uh because it like there's like a little bit more polygon then it is 3D sprite based because Fusion was more sprite based in a sense. So maybe it, it feels like it has more of the uh, aesthetic of like other M to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it kind of it, it kind of makes me think of Link Between Worlds if it was in a 2D plane instead of overhead. Um, even though Link Between Worlds is lo- moving a little bit faster than uh, Samus Returns. Um, it, it, it's kind of surprising that they, they that Mercury system got chosen uh, because of Lords of Shadow Two, um, and how problematic that game was. So for Nintendo to work with them and they come out of the blue, I was kind of shocked to see that. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk of concern on that issue, but um, I, I would say my hope is that just given that they have some some pedigree somewhere inside the Castlevania series, there's some semblance of understanding of how a Metroidvania should work. And, you know, on top of that, some of the talk that they had tried to get involved with a, a Metroid game for some time. But, um, 
one of the things I definitely wanted to, to talk to you guys about and have you on, um, you know, I, I'm sure I know Steve, you've seen it. Um, I don't know if you have Milton, but there's been a fair amount of people that are like, fuck this shit. I'm not buying it. You know, it's disrespectful to AM2R that was way better. And, you know, you've, you've had a, a fair bit to say in response to that. So if, I'd love to give you the platform to kind of elaborate on that to anybody that's saying as much. Um, I think it's, uh, it doesn't, it's completely unrelated. Uh, the legal stance that uh, Nintendo has to have regarding their IPs is one thing. And uh, the quality and merits that a game has when it's released and people actually play it is just another. If I am going to be not playing Samus Returns, is either because I don't have a 3DS or uh, the word got out that the game is not good. And that's going to be my criteria to judge if I'm going to be playing it or just uh, buying it or not. That should be common sense, I, I guess. Um, the M2R legal stuff was going to be happening, whether I like it or not. And... Um, that's it. I'm moving past that. I have accepted what happened. I understand what uh, what was the context about uh, that decision. And uh, the game was finished. People are actually playing it right now. And I learned quite a lot. I met wonderful people. Uh, you can see Mr. Saber here. That's uh, one of them. And uh, this, is opening up, this is opening up uh, opportunities for all of us. So... Um, I certainly do not uh, share that opinion or that stance regarding Nintendo and uh, Samsung Returns. Well, do you think it's weird people would act that way after they've been crying for a Metroid game and they got promised two games? Uh, I guess people don't know what they want. It, because <laughs> cause if if you say that, I, I hope they show off Metroid. Like, you don't give no idea of what kind of Metroid game that you got. Nintendo is giving you got, giving players what they always ask for. Whether they didn't say no remake, they didn't say a new game, they just said Metroid. So, then they said it twice. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, like, do you find it weird that people would be like, well, I'm not going to buy it. And I, I wouldn't even say because of Metroid Other M or Metroid Federation Force. I believe that, you know, if you ask for something and it's given to you, why are why the complaints for it of not buying it? I think it's part of the creative. Uh, being a creator, you do something and someone in the internet is always going to be bitching and complaining about it. What if, what if the, it's, it's the most wonderful thing out there, or, or if it's exactly what the majority of the fans were, wanted? Um, there's people that didn't like MJR, and I'm perfectly fine with it. I take all the constructive criticism that I can take of that, and that's it. And uh, in this case, I'm pretty sure Nintendo is giving Metroid fans what they wanted, but still, there is going to be bitching about it. Um we cannot always agree on everything about Nintendo. Mm -hmm. The the way that they manage YouTubers and uh, fan creations could be a little bit more modern, but not that's one thing. Uh, the I cannot deny that the quality of the games is very good. I heard uh, very wonderful things about Splatoon, about the latest Mario Kart, uh, Donkey Kong uh, Tropical Freeze. I, I I heard it's awesome. And uh, my opinion is never going to be tarnished by any other uh, features or practices about the company. A game is a game, is a product, and it's good or bad or it's merit. And that, at least that's, that's the way I, I see it. Uh, Steve, uh, did you feel like, did you do a double take when they first announced it? Was you just like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> like, did you do something like that? Well, what happened was... We were we were watching the live stream because things worked out that I got to watch the whole um, whole E3 live. That was awesome. Um, but so I'm watching this. I was watching the the Nintendo Direct, the the stream they had in the morning, 
and they finish up the direct. They announce Metroid Prime Four. All right, cool. We didn't see any gameplay, but we know it's on the horizon and that they're working on it. That's great news. I'm excited for that. But, but um, I thought that that was the end of their their little bit, and they were gonna go into the treehouse and talk about the games they'd already talked about. So I go out and I start doing dishes and cleaning up around the house and running chores. I walk back into the bedroom. And I see Samus standing on top of her gunship and the new trailer for uh, Samus Returns, and I was surprised. I didn't realize that they were going to be announcing two Metroid games, let alone one. But I watched the rest of the trailer. I watched all the gameplay, and I decided that absolutely I'm going to play it. I already pre-ordered it. This is what we wanted. We want more Metroid games, and the only way we're going to get them is to keep buying them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, I was text, uh when they, after they announced Metroid 4, I, I uh, sent Larry a message, and Larry didn't get back to me just yet. And then we just started, me and my other friends, we started talking. And during my, our talk, I look at the screen, and Samus is just like body slamming an alien and shit. I'm like, <laughs> what the world is this? And I'm thinking it's a new Metro. I didn't even realize it was Samus Return. And then when they when they show uh Samus Return, I went back to the computer. I'm just like Larry. Are, did did that little thing happen to you once again? Are you alive? Uh, send the SOS. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Eddie didn't recognize that because Eddie still hasn't finished the original since he started it last summer. Really? Yeah. I keep telling him, like, dude, it takes three hours to finish it. I, I, I'm playing it in two more weeks. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I, I, I can't help it. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> you can finish that in a day's worth of bathroom breaks. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not remind me of that. I did have that I'm situation. Being awfully forward today. Right. <laughs> I had a situation like that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it would have been a, a good time to play that. Um, Isn't that what the Switch is good for? I don't That's have it. one yet. Yeah, Eddie's not don't there. Worry, yet. You'll have one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we, we got two of them, so I'm hoping no one buys them until Friday, and then Friday, hopefully, I could put them Yeah, that's one not going to last. One. Well, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, but what do you guys think of the new abilities that they showed in the game? Um, well, <clears throat> um, they are nothing new. Uh, overall, I mean, they are new stuff that's uh, new for the Metroid universe. Mm-hmm. But um, so far, uh. It seems to be adding a little bit of uh, complexity to the combat. Uh, the parry mechanic is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm pretty sure later enemies are going to be more tricky to parry, and uh, that has the potential of making the game overly easy for people that has good timing. Uh, but if this is going to be something like uh, the parry in the Castlevania games, uh, I only played the uh, Lost of Shadow 1, and uh, actually getting to parry and good timing was essential to actually finishing the game. If this goes towards that route, it's going to be interesting for for some later encounters. I'm certainly uh, curious about what the bigger metroids are going to be looking like. Um, but anyways, the abilities seem to be pretty functional, and uh, having them as a limited resource is going to be um, strategic, I guess. Uh, having the player to choose whether he's going to be looking <clears throat> to a little bit of more of the map or saving for uh, a little bit more of defensive options in case uh, some Metroid pops up out of nowhere. Could be interesting. Let's see how they execute it. Okay. Steve, your thoughts on some of the new stuff that they're showing in there? I, I want to say, too, just on a, something that you had touched on, Milton. I know in some of that gameplay demo, they showed one of the, the later evolutions, and I think to speak to some of what we were talking about earlier, I'm looking at it going... I know it's a later one, but the way it looks, I can't tell if that's their presentation of a Zeta or an Omega. It just, it didn't look defined. And I think what was missing, or now that I'm thinking on it, what feels like it's missing with that gamma is they, it feels anemic rather than big and present. Well, I do it looks seem... more like a Xenomorph. Yeah, uh, a with, little bit. With, with, with slim, our Zeta Metro is a little bit, so uh, I think it's a natural design choice. Um, the original one, the original Zeta Metro is uh, pretty chubby. It can be cute. You actually want to hug it. 
Um, <laughs> uh, we went Speak to World. For yourself. <laughs> um, so we went more for the Velociraptor style of design overall for the body. Um, so yes, they actually took some other. They, they took another uh, design choice to make it also look slim and uh, agile. I think it's a uh, it's a valid choice, I guess. Okay. Well, the... Steve, your thoughts, since you're, you're more on the artistic side there. It looks slim. It looks fast. It looks dangerous. Um, but I think that's also a compliment of the entire art direction of the game. Is that, um, from what I can tell, the edges are a lot sharper. The game's a little bit darker. It looks like they're going more for a 3D Super Metroid feel. And that actually speaks across Samus's design as well, as her new suit makes her look more like a weapon than a catalyst. And the same could be said with the Zetas, is that they their shape fits the art style of the game. They look meaner. And we haven't seen any Omegas yet, and I believe that they were... I'm sure they were holding that back on purpose. Mm-hmm. I believe that those are going to be a unique experience. But the Zetas themselves, they look they look quick. I appreciate how they move across the entire room. But um I can't make a I can't make a complete judgment until I know what the Omegas look like as well. To see how that evolutionary process pulls off. Yeah. It will certainly oh. help to see the entire spectrum of Metroids and how they relate to each other. Yeah, not only exactly. that, but do they deliver uh, on the Queen? Yeah, I, I kind of hope they don't decide to make her look like Reptar again. <laughs> wow. I, I, I really want to see an art book of this after the game comes out. Like, I want to see the design of the art. Uh, yeah, if you're in Europe, you get that. <laughs> right? Dick that Badgers. is beyond frustrating. I would gladly pay for that limited edition, but yeah, they're not releasing yeah. it in the States. Well, I th- I'm sitting here. I've been trying to find contacts, uh, you know, anybody that I can reach <laughs> right. out to over there or anybody, you know, over there online that would ship it here. And so far, I'm I'm running up nothing. I mean, we've seen – I've been watching on a couple of forums that I've seen pre-orders for the Legacy Edition go up over there, but no – not through any site that will ship to the States. Oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah, you have to have someone uh, buy it and uh, actually do inter- international shipping. Um, I think I was me Larry was talking about this is I think because Nintendo in Europe is not that big, so I think this something like this Legacy Edition is trying to be appealing so more people could buy it. Because I would be shocked if that if that Legacy Edition doesn't sell out of pre orders or doesn't even sell out when that game comes out. I would be very shocked. Agreed. Yeah. I'm just, it's, it's infinitely frustrating, especially considering that, you know, the, the states that North America has traditionally been, or has always been where this series has sold the best. Yes. It's like, why are you, why are you stiffing us? <laughs> well, so. I, I, well, I wonder if they're, how much they're going to be charging for it, you know? So uh, I've seen somewhere to the tune of about ninety bucks, give or take. Oh, yeah, that's about what I was thinking. <laughs> Maybe they are just uh, holding back a little bit, and then uh, all of a sudden they announced there's going to be a huge limited edition with the premise that uh, hey, we listen to the fans. You wanted this, and uh, we are delivering. We are Nintendo. We're good guys, right? Right. Because if they did no. it, if they literally did this in America. We we would get like a limited run, a limited edition, and all of them will be on eBay for like double or triple the price. <laughs> yeah, we do have an issue with scalpers. Yeah, I've already seen some of that coming up. Actually, it's been not pretty. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. Um. So, what did you guys think about the amiibo? Uh, let's touch on that a little bit. Uh, of course, the squishy Metroid. Everybody just has fallen in love. I think this is one of those enemy kind of things to be like, I know you're deadly, but I get to squish your head and you're so cute. <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's something about that. Like, I, I, it's like, endearing. Yes. 
Oh. Um, for me, it looks uh, it looks it looks kind of cute, but um, I really cannot. Uh, I'm really not that much interested in amiibos mm-hmm. uh, because there's a logistical thingy going on here that uh, since there is uh, way too many taxes to import things from the US, uh, it would be very impractical and expensive to get either one of those. So I just keep seeing them as very expensive toys. Uh, maybe I'm just getting old. But if these things were available at the same price that you guys get it there, it could, it could be a nice buy if I were having a couple of uh, extra bucks for my pockets. Um, it, they look nice, I guess. So, I, I have to try to make some magic work and hopefully be able to send you one like... Uh, uh, because someone is already already looking at me about a certain system that's coming out uh, <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll talk to you later about that one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I've got my Amiibos covered. I just need you to work on that. <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, I will say, though, I was super excited to see that Samus Amiibo. It looked so much better than the one that they did for the Smash line. To, to see them go back to that much kind of tougher armored. I love that rich red chrome look on there. Mm-hmm. Looks so much better than that old uh, other M design. Oh, the armor design looks awesome, certainly. But the the Samus Returns one just to me looks so much better with the kneeling and everything. Not just the pose, but like I said, the actual difference in design in her armor looks f- so much better to me. Wasn't her wasn't a Samus uh outfit yellow at one point, or is that Super Metroid? Yeah, the yeah the the stripped down bare bones power suit is has more of that yellow look to it. It's when you get the uh, various suit that you start getting that red in there. Okay. So. <laughs> well, um, what did you guys think that though? that amiibo will do for that game. Do you guys like... Yeah, that's something they've been real quiet on. Mm. What would you like to see out of those amiibos? Yes. Uh, I want to color my armor. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What about you, Milton? Um, Maybe Justin Bailey, um, Ciro Sutsanos, possibly. It's not a bad idea. I like that, actually. The, when her being in the black outfit? Uh, as long you know, as you get just... to look at her butt the whole time. <laughs> ah, took the words out of my mouth, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're going to be needing quite a lot of poly count for that. So, so there's, there's a couple of uh, listener questions I kind of want to shoot past you guys here. Um... We've got one from uh, Andrew P. on Twitter uh, asking, uh, how do you guys feel about Reggie saying AM2R was a commercial product that was uh, free? And, uh, Steve, I know I sent you that article. I figured you'd find that uh, interesting, if not amusing, to say the least. (laughs) Hmm. Okay. um, At least I was a little bit confused when I actually read the article. Um. I guess in the end, the entire wording was a bit weird. But um, after all, he is actually referring to Game 2 r I I want to believe, as a high-quality enough game to drive the IP somewhere, pretty much like a commercial game would. So I have to take that as a compliment. Um, they actually they are actually very justified in what they actually did legally. So uh, they saw it as a potentially... A competitive product that could, could confuse the customer, and uh, yes, they are actually right. Well, uh, I'll let you go, Steve, and then I'll kind of uh, break it down how I kind of view it. I think I, me and Larry talked about it, but go ahead, Steve. Uh, what's your answer? Well, I'm gonna have to agree with Doc on that one. Is the way I read it is that it's it's at a quality that is high enough to potentially confuse a customer or if it wasn't infringing on IP be sold. Um, and that's the closest so far that they've come to giving us a compliment. So we'll take it. <laughs> well, um, I, I was telling Larry this, that 
uh when like after I read it that you know when he he said like well, we're okay with like some fan projects and stuff but once you start you know distributing it it becomes a commercial product like uh once you guys put it online to download um and people see they see it that as the way of making a purchase and yeah again it's still confused um when i was talking, talking to everybody i was just like the distribution method is got to be different so once you guys put it online for people to download, and this is just for anybody that uh, it's the form of purchasing when you're download, downloading it, when it's free. Um, if you guys put it on the disc and kind of distribute it that way without people, without, you know, without people putting it online or anything, uh, like it's a one-time use or something. Like if you guys were able to give it out CDs and that Nintendo didn't like really recognize that you guys was distributing that way, um, that would be a different form of product uh, for them to say anything. Um, but people might have might have just like downloaded. And, I mean, maybe copy and start selling it and stuff. So I, I think it was like the distribution portion of it was, was different. Certainly, there was uh, the potential of uh, that scenario happening. Uh, it would be pretty much a bootleg at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll put myself out there and freely admit that uh, there was a, a couple of different uh, outlets online that actually did some physical versions, and really the only thing they were selling was their time and material, you know, just a, with a, an avenue for, you know, here's something pretty to put on your shelf and there was one in particular that stood out to me that I went, I want that for my shelf because it's fucking pretty that I picked up. <laughs> um, um, no, and it was it was gorgeous. Uh, the the guy did a beautiful job with them, but in any case, you know, it's it was definitely packaged at almost a commercial level uh, product. But you know, as far as what you guys did, you know, it was definitely. Uh, like, like you said, I could definitely see it as uh, a complement of sorts. Um, but, you know, by, by the same token, you know, nobody ever said you guys were quite clear. It's like all credit goes to Nintendo. We just liked the thing and wanted to make it because we fucking love it. So now the thing is, uh, there is actually a conflict about the actual Metro two, uh, product. Mm -hmm. They actually remade it. They are actually remaking it. And I'm pretty sure this entire scenario would be pretty different if we already knew that this was a thing. Right. Um, <laughs> they, if this would be some Metroid fan game that uh, goes around certain events on the timeline, including Metroid 2, that could be something that could coexist uh, with, Met- with Metroid 2 and the rest of the series as a uh, derivative project that uh, just tells extra stories about Metroid, okay. I guess. Because I think they had to be making this game when Federation Force was being made. So I think that's why they made Federation Force more of a side game. I'm pretty sure this game of that size and complexity uh, with a small team should be taking a little bit more than two years of development. So, yes, I'm pretty sure they may have been uh, already in development when AM2R was announced and released. Yeah, the word was was that Samus Returns was uh, about a three-year development cycle from what I was reading. So, I mean, it was in the works. Um, while Federation you know, Force was being made? Yeah, or while Federation Force was just being wrapped up, basically. Okay. So, oh. but um, what I wanted to, to hit on from uh, Spencer Gardner um, asking uh was there ever a time during uh, the development for AM2R where you guys thought this isn't worth it anymore and what kept you guys going? And I, I want to pile on top of that. Had you guys have known or had the announcement for Samus Returns come before you had finished it and put it out, what, if anything, would you have done different? Oh, that's <laughs> that's a pretty long question. Um, okay. Um... Sorry, I give you a triple decker. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was related. I couldn't help it. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, at least for me, there were way too many times. Um, sometimes, I think right now, we are enjoying the glory of a We are uh, 
we have received the praise of uh, way too many fans, and that's awesome. But uh, before that, there were way too many years of uh, being silent and uh, putting out demos for a very small community, and then uh, just uh, that, just relying on my very own instinct and my ability to find free time to develop a game that I actually know that I won't be finishing neither today or tomorrow or next week or next month. So it's a little bit discouraging to do this kind of thing without a very clear end goal. So uh, sometimes it, it was difficult to be motivated. Other times life got in the way. I, I couldn't actually have the physical time to actually work on it. But uh, the times I actually could sit down, uh, I found that having smaller uh, goals and uh, disguising them as uh, demos was kind of the way to go. Um, I had a motivation to actually finish something that was feasible and uh, just focus on the features I actually needed to show that piece of the game to the public. So I focused on the first area. Uh, I learned quite a lot on that uh, first demo. Then I, by the time I finished the second area demo, I had already implemented more options and more features for the game. And uh, every demo after that was one area after the other. And uh, the feedback that people provided was actually useful for the game and useful for me to be motivated. Uh, the Knowing that my direction was pretty much the right one and what people wanted was very helpful, uh, keeping keeping me motivated. And the last stretch, the last couple of years, the last couple of months were insane. We were we were working like clockwork. Uh, by that time, we have a we had a very very structured uh, project management uh, thing going on, and uh, we had very clear goals, and uh, we knew exactly what the game was going to be going to be looking like and feeling like. So that last stretch, and uh, actually reaching the anniversary as a as a, as a deadline was awesome. Uh, we all have we all have hard time uh, finding time to create and be motivated. But uh, having people telling you that you're going on the right track is certainly very important. Mm-hmm. Steve, some of your thoughts on that? I I was in agreement the whole time. <laughs> I've made a few words. I think I I couldn't put it better myself if I wanted to. It's uh, the feedback has been very heartwarming, and it's I don't know about Doc, but it's a first for me. Oh, <laughs> and goddamn, does it mean the world? Oh. So um, another one from because I I got like two guys on here that just hit me with a slew of these. Um, I did Andrew, see that. I know. <laughs> um, I, I, hey, more more credit to those that get super fucking excited yeah. about it. We appreciate that shit. I'm sure you guys do too. But Andrew was asking, uh, what would you guys like to see done in uh, Samus uh, Returns that you guys weren't able to implement in AM2R? Um, <clears throat> for me, um, balanced Omega Metroid fights that are not uh, either either overpowered or uh, very uh, nerfed. Um, yeah, I couldn't make reactions like, on that one. Yeah, we, we didn't have time to actually uh, make it, to, re- to revise it properly. I, that needed a lot more uh, playtesting. Uh, my yeah. apologies for that. Um, <laughs> maybe a queen I battle like that it. has uh, two, more, more than two attacks. Fine is a little bit uh, repetitive after time. And uh, you know, the usual stuff like achievements and uh, some incentive to play the game after you finish it. Um, those were things that were planned to be implemented in future updates, but, uh, well, you know the story. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the counter attack in uh, Samus Returns uh, kind of fixes that balance? Um... Uh, it certainly creates uh, windows of opportunities to retaliate uh, and reward the player that's uh, quick enough. I'm not sure how uh, battles are going to be dragging if you actually suck at the counter attack, mm-hmm. but uh, it will be a matter of uh, actually trying it out. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> Bouncing back to Spencer here. Um, wants to know what developer or studio would you guys like to uh, work or collaborate with given the opportunity? Steve, answer first because <laughs> you answered <laughs> this on, on Twitter. He's just like, hey, Nintendo, what up? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think Steve had one of the best things on Twitter. If I recall, I believe the uh, comment was, uh, where's my job offer? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I want to work in the industry. And then, oh, look, we made AM2R. And then there's another another Metroid 2 remake coming out. If, maybe if you want some help with that one, you know, I'm nearby. I live near Redmond. I can I can come over. I'm willing to make the drive every day. The manageable <laughs> commute. But isn't Mercury, isn't Mercury <laughs> System in uh, Mexico? Mercury or? Steam. Um, it's Nintendo of America? No, uh, Mercury System. Are they in, like, Mexico? Oh, Mercury um, Steam. Mercury Steam is in Spain. It's not Mercury Steam. It's Mercury System. I believe it's Mercury Steam. Check it. Yes, they are it based sure in is. Spain. And uh, yes, I'm uh, apparently I'm pretty much isolated from the rest of the world. <laughs> um, so, uh, if I were to talk realistically, there's not that many uh, game studios that work in in, in Argentina. Um, and for what I heard, the working conditions are, are, are not the best. So for now, I'm fairly happy with my current job. But um, if we are going to be escalating what we are going to be doing uh, right now as an indie developer, I might be able to someday um, make something a little bit more serious. Um, it will all depend on how this uh, upcoming new project that we're working on uh, works out. Okay. I'm Is just it too late be... to change my answer? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it was, well, it just got me thinking that I don't. I mean, yeah, there's there's a few like there's a handful of indie developers out there I wouldn't mind working with. Um, like I wouldn't mind seeing how Tom Hap works, like his workflow. That would be nice. Okay. But uh, I think the probably the best place to work would be all with Doc on our own thing. <laughs> having our own private studio that we built from the ground up. That would be certainly awesome. Yeah. That's where oh. I would like to be. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was Mercury System. They have Mercury Scenes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Love me. Eddie, no, you boy. have to remember the first rule of every... And my wife knows this. I've drilled this into her. First rule of life, Larry is always right. Second rule is Larry lies. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna push you. We're just gonna push you into the. We're just gonna push you into the corner and let you just play with the toys right over there. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, go ahead and ask because I, I, I was going because I was going to ask you guys. Uh, do you think uh, Mercury Steam was a good choice uh, for them to work with, knowing some of their past games? Or pedigree, if you will. Yeah. I myself only played the uh, the first uh, Castlevania. The what was it called? Lord uh, of Shadow. Lord of Shadow. Lord of Shadow. The only, the first Lord of Shadow was uh, very solid. I played the PC version. I did like the gameplay. Uh, I'm not sure what the rest of the games in the in that uh, particular series uh, were, but. Um, I'm pretty sure these guys are actually capable of uh, a good product. Um, I'm not sure uh, how different Konami and Nintendo are on supervising third-party developers and how their quality um, requirements are, but uh, let's hope that uh, they're actually fairly strict. I'm pretty sure that it's, it's it, will, uh, it will end up being... Awesome game. Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, with Konami, I think they just gave Mercury Steam a budget and then let them do whatever they want to. I think Nintendo, after Mercury Steam presented like their version of the game, Nintendo was working with them to get the game right. So they're getting more feedback. So, uh, so there is more involvement. Yeah. Oh, awesome. 
because Nintendo mostly does that when they let another company work on their uh, IPs. They'll go in, uh, play something, give them feedback, and then they'll they'll let the developer um, do what they want to do and stuff. And um, a lot of I think a lot of times when they get involved, the game gets better, and you can start seeing some of Nintendo's influence in other other games. Because that's what happened with Platinum with Bayonetta two. They did let Platinum mm-hmm. do whatever they want to, but they gave them some hints not hints they gave them some like advice and some you know to make stuff stuff some some of the stuff better and that's why bayonetta 2 came out to be the way that it is and stuff i don't uh, fully know the entire uh, mercury steam pedigree uh my apologies i didn't uh, make my homework mm-hmm. um but uh, maybe Mr. Steve here You're knows kidding, we don't a little do more. Homework here. We're not that fucking organized. <laughs> well, um, from, from what I know, Murky, Murky Steam only made three games. Uh, the two Castlevanias uh, for PS3 and I think 360. And then that Castlevania, uh, that was like the mid version, uh, the mid game to go into Lord of Shadows for 3DS. So Mercury Steam has worked on 3DS. They have some um, involved, uh, some experience. Experience, experience? yeah. Uh, so knowing with that experience, they were probably easier able to work with, uh, Nintendo on that. Awesome. Um, Steve, I got one here specifically for you. Um, wants to know, why don't you post more of your cats on Twitter, more pictures of your cats on Twitter? That's a very good question. (laughs) Well, uh, if you will address, address. Press your attention to my Twitter feed, you will see that I have begun fixing that. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. Uh, and on a that's, equally that's, comedic, that's commitment to the fans. That's right. There. right. Um, instant results, guys. We get it done here in World 1 1. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, and then from the uh, same gentleman, Alex, <laughs> on Twitter, wants to know uh, Milton, why do you think Prince of Persia sucks? Ah, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Milton, before you answer, which We've ver- talked about this before. Which, which version? Of Pr- which version of Prince of Persia? Because there's multiple no, versions. No, 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 no. That, that's that's a that's a very stupid misunderstanding. And it, it was my fault. Sorry. Um, that was some <laughs> random placeholder text I had uh, when when I was recording the trailer. Uh, once you get the power grip, I was actually intended to say something like, uh, "Take that, Prince of Persia." I can actually claim ledges too. Uh, but uh, the entire text didn't fit the small box, so I actually made ah, let's let's write Prince of Persia's house, and it worked to test the power up and the small cutscene that you get when you pick up the new power up and all, and all stuff. When I recorded the first trailer, I completely forgot to change that that text, so you get to see that <laughs> for a small fraction of, of a second, and suddenly the comments were flooded with "Why do you hate Prince of Persia? You mouth, you know that kind of thing." Uh, but uh, I actually did enjoy uh, Prince of Persia on my childhood. And uh, actually, The Sons of Time, that would be my favorite uh, PS2 game. Yeah, I so agree. Far. I played that on GameCube. I agree with you. Uh, I actually did the whole trilogy. Uh, but I think one is, I think Sands of, T- Sands of Time is the best one out of it. Agreed. Oh. Um, I've got one for you guys. Just I, since, you know, we, we have the platform here. I got one after uh, you, Larry. Okay. Um, for for what it's worth, not that they listen, though they should. Bunch of slackers. Um, if you guys had the opportunity to, uh, you know, put something out there to uh, the likes of Reggie, Bill, Trinan, and uh, you know anybody else over there at Nintendo, um, what would you uh, what would you have to say? What would you want them to hear from you guys? Oh, um, well, I would just want them to play it and enjoy it and then not worry about, you know, saying any weird legal negative things. I just want honest feedback. Okay, uh, in my case, <laughs> if you some, if you someday play it and uh, you wish to inform us that uh, you enjoyed the game... In any interview, please look at the camera and wink, wink twice. <laughs> yes. I, I will understand it. Nice. Uh, uh, 
I, I will cut this into a clip and put it on Twitter, and I will specifically tag Bill Trennan in this. Oh, wow. <laughs> See if we can tag uh, Reggie in that, too, just for shits and giggles. Because I know Bill has actually been uh, – was somewhere uh, aware of our Twitter at one point when we had Per Schneider on. There was some back and forth on our Twitter yeah. between those two, so which was kind of shocking to me. I'm like – Oh look, Bill Trinan's on our fucking Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and I actually invited That's Bill Trinan. I, I actually invited Bill Trinan. I was just like, I I love you, I yeah. adore you, and stuff like. We, if you, we reached out. We I reached out. Back. I was just Come like, on, Bill, what do you got? And and I and I was just like, I don't care if we don't even talk about Nintendo. Let's talk about baseball or your camping trip. That's all I care about. Right. If I could just hear from you, like that would be my whole thing. Like the only thing, Nintendo thing, I would be was just like. How does how does it feel to like just translate me a model thoughts <laughs> and just shut up for the whole show? <laughs> so so Eddie, what do you got? Um, uh, uh, what I like to ask you guys um uh, is if you guys can make Metroid in another style, uh, would you make it as an arcade game, or would you do it as a uh, a venture game like what kind of style would you would you like do it like a level by level uh arcade game or a venture style game huh. with text um how would how would you change metroid to like or would you like would you what genre would you put it in instead of doing the metrovania or the normal metroid game the text adventure game ends constantly with you have been eaten by a stone toad <laughs> um, well, I already tried the text adventure game uh, genre once. Uh, mm-hmm. It was an April's Fool uh, prank. But I'm pretty sure that uh, something with high difficulty and uh, careful design, uh, you know, taking your time to traverse the, the map, would kind of uh, enforce the exploration. Something like maybe Dark Souls, possibly. Um, I was just going to say a Metroid Souls like. <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm about to try in a couple of hours. Uh, I'm going to be t- trying uh, Dark Souls two for the first time. Oh. So, uh, any any advice on that? Uh, I have not had the uh, joy of jumping into that yet. I have. I have uh, it for a uh, PS3, but I haven't started. I think I might upgrade uh, and get the collector's edition, like for uh, Xbox One. I've been watching a friend of mine play it on Twitch for the last month and a half, two months, and I, I can tell you I've seen several nights of uh, her streaming where it was literally just pounding over and over again at the same set of bosses for mm. nights on end when she would stream for, you know, two to four hours a night uh, getting her ass kicked. But, I mean, she's <laughs> she's – all credit to her – She's going like a hundred percent blind on this, and she's not letting anybody give her any hints or anything. Um, wow. I, I was actually just talking to her earlier today, you know, teasing her. I'm like, no, she Kate's playing it so blind, she actually wears a blindfold. She can't see shit on the screen. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> awesome. that's that's too but, much dedication <laughs> for that. <laughs> so, for what I've for what I've seen on the souls like genre. Um, it requires the player to actually think about the actions and know the moveset as much as they can. Mm-hmm. So that kind of uh, design philosophy, uh, even if it's not uh, completely in that direction, could benefit a Metroid game, in my opinion. Definitely. Okay. Um, what did you guys? Th- we I haven't heard thoughts of what do you guys think of Metro Prime Four. Um, what are you looking for with that game? Uh, I know it has a it has a nice logo. <laughs> it does, because uh, I, I know it was. Uh, it was a great reveal. That cloudy s logo was fantastic. I, mean, I know was me not and, expecting it. I know me and Larry has talked about it because uh, he has uh, a thought of where the story is going to go. Um, but where did you guys? My think... thought comes directly from Tanabi. That's from his interview shit. So I, you take that from what it's worth. But uh, where did you oh, think... about Silex? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Where did you guys think it's gonna? It could go. Uh, with Metroid Prime Four. Uh, okay, this uh, in this case, I'm pretty sure the there's going to be the my main concern would be the balance between um, obligatory mimics gimmicks uh, because of the hardware this is going to be running on 
-hmm. versus a solid game. So I certainly hope they are not as gimmicky as Metroid Prime 3 regarding some stuff that could be potentially happening. But uh, actually, being on the Switch uh, that doesn't have that many options for Metroid to mess up with motion controls and stuff. So uh, I'm really eager to see some classic Prime there. Okay. Uh, Steve, Steve, thoughts on Prime thoughts. 4? What was that? Thoughts, hopes on Prime 4? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know what to expect. I know it's being created by an internal team in Kyoto instead of retro, like most people were hoping, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, that very well means that it could be worked on by the same team that did Breath of the Wild. That could be huge. Um, they very well could be getting the same kind of budget. We don't know. But we know it's a first-person shooter. Um, I'm, I doubt they're going to do Call of Duty Metroid Edition. I'm sure yeah. it's, it'll be some kind of unique release with um, a different gimmick and hopefully with less motion controls. Yeah. But um, maybe they'll use some of what they learned from working on Splatoon to create a new unique Metroid experience. I will say there are actually a couple tidbits, and you guys touched on one of them, you know, that we do know about what's happening with Prime 4, you know. I, they they have said it's it's a new team that's in Kyoto, but it's uh, from some of the tidbits that I've been reading and picking up, um, the, that team has been basically just about hand-picked by Tanabe and put together. So Kensuke is the one still heading it up, and he's put together a new internal team and then, you know, to, to touch on the retro issue, yeah, it's it's not retro, but by the same token, Retro Studios isn't even the same group of people anymore that it was by the time Prime 3 finished because so many of them have left and gone elsewhere. Mm -hmm. They um, started so, uh, Arm, Arm something Studios? Armature. So you've got, Armature. Yeah, you've got some that went off and did ReCore, which, by the way, hey, Microsoft, we'd love for you to finish that fucking game already. And then, um... which was weird that they didn't show that at e at e three, like where's this definitive edition at? I don't want the definitive edition. I want the rest of the game that we paid for. I know that. I know that. But shoot, you announced the definitive edition. Was it that short? Well, it's not just that. There's literally missing. Content. They're missing. They're there's missing a whole other robot the game that's blocked off because there's one of the robot shells that was supposed to be in there and is not in the final retail product. They said that we'll release it as DLC, and they've never fucking it, released it. Right. So there's a whole hunk of the game you can't get to. And so the well, deal... I played the demo, and I know there's whole hunks of the ground that you can't walk on, otherwise you fall through the level. Oh, yeah, that's oh. Uh, quite the challenge. Well, that's, that that means that it's the Ubisoft, Ubisoft game, because, goodness, as many that times as... Oh, Watch Dogs 2, I fell... I'm walking through the street and I fell into the sea. I'm like, wait, what the heck did, how did I end? I'm mm -hmm. literally on the street and I fell through the world and ended up where some fish was swimming by me. I'm like, are you serious? Maybe you, you hugged the floor or something. No, the game is, bro, was buggy as ever. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it really? is quite buggy. Like, yeah. Ubisoft is known to have buggy games where you literally just fall through the floor for no apparent reason. But yeah, that and, um, you know, after uh, Prime 3 finished, you had uh, a number of their artists uh, from Retro went over to uh, 343 and worked on Halo 4 as well. Yeah, that's why it looks like Metroid. Like, it has that mm -hmm. Metroid feel. It's a, a lot of that orange glowy aesthetic from the uh, Pirate Homeworld. Yep, that's there. And that's, you know, that was their handiwork. I, I need to start so, I need to start Halo 4. And that actually made me want to play Halo again. What's Halo 4? I liked Halo 4. Honestly, that was my favorite of the four of them, of the first four. I still haven't mm -hmm. touched five yet. But four I liked better than one, two, and three. So. That's all right. I'm, I'm hesitant just because I was really looking forward to the story that they said we were going to get. And then from everything that I've seen, they're like, yeah, you oh, get yeah. nothing of that story. I'm like, that's no, not no, you don't, you what don't get I any wanted, of that. you assholes. No, the story was kind of disappointing. And it, it went in a it went in a direction that was um, very predictable and disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, multiplayer is really good. 
<laughs> oh, wow. So is Forge Mode, for that matter. Which one? I cannot believe how much they're supporting Forge Mode. That is awesome. Oh, of uh, Halo 4? No, is it Halo 4? Halo 5. Oh, Halo 5. I still need to buy that <laughs> one uh, so I can have the collection. Totally worth it. So, um, I've got one more in here, and uh, it's entirely up to you guys if there's anything there to talk about or not. Um, I know where this is going. <laughs> I'm not asking. I'm asking because it's written here. Uh, Should I be a friend? Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Chrono M uh, at Japan Expo uh, says, please ask them about upcoming projects. <laughs> Ooh, that question. You know that's going to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you know um, it was about to. It, that, that's almost inevitable. <coughs> Honestly, there's several asks of that, but <laughs> okay. Um, the following is pretty much what we can share with the public right now. Hmm? Um, we are working on something. We have been working on the past couple of months on something new. Uh, it is very likely to be a Metroidvania. It is very likely to have a similar graphic style to what we did in M2, but it's going to be using the Unity engine. Oh, I'm working congrats. on a new engine. Oh, thank you. Um, it's uh, quite a f- big change. Uh, some things are insanely awesome, easy to do. Some things are very quirky and take quite a lot of work, but uh, overall, I'm getting fairly good results. Um, right now, everything is uh, just a prototype pre-alpha, we are ironing out the design of the abilities, uh, the main character, what the overall uh, story is going to be. But uh, it's very likely to be sci-fi uh, with very unique locations. It's not going to be the typical ice, fire, forest, um, cave, uh, typical stereotypes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- things are going. we are making an effort to make the environments unique. And... Um, Yes, we're going to be focusing on ex- exploration. And there's going to be a little bit more... Uh, of, uh, there's going to be combat that's a little bit more uh, intense than m 2 But, uh, yes, we are aiming to make something unique, original, and um, fun to play. Um, oh, yay! That's, that's all I can say for now. Um, sometime in the future, we are going to be sharing... Uh, more details, uh, including what the name is going to be, um, what the plans of uh, the entire production are going to be, when we can expect a, any demos or playable alphas or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, we we intend to do a much more interactive uh, development uh, after we um, announce the project. Uh, nowadays, uh, Twitter, I see many developers sharing small tidbits of uh, features they add, uh, asking questions about how to solve certain features in Unity, and uh, that kind of thing makes uh, things uh, much more dynamic. And uh, I want to, I want to try that approach. Maybe someday I will gather the courage to do a dev stream on Twitch. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but uh, I want to go that way, making it more open to the public to just let me know what they want to see and uh, try to do as best to uh, Are you, uh, comply. Uh, would you start out with by showing a piece of artwork or anything? Uh, like, like not even saying nothing, but just like, <laughs> just like, here's, like here's a slide <laughs> concept art. Right, and and just like uh, and don't and like don't even say nothing, you know. Have people think that is this a new game? Is this just like 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 just some art that they drew? Like, are you gonna kind of keep it ambiguous, like very like secretive until you guys are ready to like drop hints and announce? At least um, I am very, I have very high standards of quality uh, mm-hmm. regarding stuff that I do make. So, um, there's. There's way too many stuff that's not defined yet. Uh, some of the environments are not fully realized. But as soon as we have something that is worth showing, uh-huh. uh, and it's not uh, changing all the time because every week the bills are changing quite a lot, and uh, we we are still seeking the overall direction of this. And uh, once we have a more or less a more uh, defined idea of the overall aesthetics and uh, some of the environments that we want to show. Yes. 
we are going to be showing that. Yes. Okay. I was going to say, uh, no, no, sir. <laughs> say tied into a little bit of housekeeping news. Um, you guys are on what will probably be one of the very last uh, versions of World 1-1 that's actually audio only, uh, thanks to a, 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 some significant growth happening um, where we're going to be switching into being able to offer a video format. So maybe with awesome. any luck, the next time we have you guys back, uh, mm-hmm. you'll you'll bring a, a trailer, some artwork with you that we can uh, put up and share with everybody for the first time. That will be awesome. Um, if, we, if, we, if we can make an exclusive reveal of sorts uh, for this uh, show, it would be awesome too. Um, so uh, we can make that happen. Uh, <laughs> Milton, uh, Steve, have you heard, uh, you probably guys probably heard of the game Rye, R-I-M-E? Yes. Okay, um, have any uh, of you guys mm-hmm. tried that? I or, think so. Uh, or have you seen like video of it or anything? Uh, it looks like cell shaded Shadow of the Colossus. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, well, the same vibe I got. I, I don't. I don't know anything really about it. I've seen one trailer uh, that showcased the art style, and I haven't heard much of it since then. But I believe it's coming to the Switch, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's coming, coming a little later I this mean, year. It's it's out. I have it on PS4. I did a review for it. Um. I, I was wondering, I because this is going to be my last question, that I was going to ask you guys, like, have you guys tried it or have you heard any of this music or anything like that? Um, or have you, like, have you guys played any indie games that or uh, that, that that's not going to affect your work or anything, but that that's, that's really just blown your mind this year? That's like or like taking your breath away. Have you guys played any indie games or anything like that? That's done that for right for 2017. Hmm. Uh, well, at least uh, I have been doing a little bit of um, uh, research. Mm-hmm. I mean, spending quite a lot of time playing games I actually needed to play, and the latest one I finished that was insanely awesome was uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh yes. my god, I love Ori. Uh, did you, oh, you so guys awesome. see the, You had to see the trailer for Ori and the Will of the Wisp. You had to see the uh, yeah. sequel. Yes, I just happened to be cooking with onions, and my tears were from the onions. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I tell you? Um, I didn't get emotional with this with the sequel trailer like I did the first game. Like I didn't really cry at the first one, but I think the first trailer really like because the first trailer made me want to get an xbox one and this the second one just made me look forward to playing the game like it didn't do nothing emotionally for me i i happen to uh, appreciate a lot uh silent storytelling and ori even if he has this uh uh Omnius narrator speaking gibberish and uh, describing the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, the characters have a very distinct and clear motivation for what they do, so everything makes sense. And I, I actually empathize with the antagonist in that game. So it it did work for me. It did. It really did uh, set the standard for whatever I want to try on my new project. So who knows? I, I did like the ending shot, that art style. When when Ori came to uh comfort the owl, and then the uh, shot goes back, and you see the uh dead owls like their skeleton bones all together. I was just like, I don't know what the, what the story is going to be about, but that was some awesome. That was an awesome shot and artwork to uh portray what some of the things that's going on in the story. Certainly, a picture speaks more than a thousand words. Yes. Uh, what about you, Steve? Anything? Uh, any indie? Anything big that just meant that like blew your mind? That's just like wow, that was really good. Hmm, that's a little bit tougher of a question for me. I haven't been playing a whole lot of video games yet, as on account of I have been, I've begun attending college again for the first time in six years. Oh, congrats! Thank you. I'm trying to take as many classes as I can in order to improve my um to improve my talent and apply that towards our project. Ah, have anything in school blown your mind? Like just like, whoa, I didn't know I could do this. <laughs> nothing nothing in particular, but I did finally play Axiom Verge 
to all the way to the end for the first time last month. Okay. And that was that was pretty interesting. I I like the twist in the story. I like the direction the story went. I thought it was cool, and I want to see the sequel. And this last week, I also um, finally got around to having enough money saved up to where I could afford to get a Switch. All right. So Yay. I went ahead and downloaded Kamiko. It's a little $5 like game Kimiko. on the eShop. It feels good to play. It Doesn't feels very it? good. It's snappy. There's um, quite a bit of tactile feedback during combat, which I appreciate. I like the art style. It reminds me of Capybara, uh, that studio. Okay. Ah, cool. I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. I wish it was a little bit longer, but it was a fun little game to play um, during I'll coffee breaks the- and in waiting rooms. Yeah, I'll say for the five bucks, you certainly don't feel like you got jipped. No, certainly. You definitely get your playtime out of it. it. It was weird kind of how it, you know, it, everybody was just like, I, we don't know if this has ever come to America, but, like, I think it's one of the most um, recommended uh, region-free games for Switch. Like, people just like, if you got $5, buy this off the Japanese uh, eShop, but then maybe three weeks later after it came out, it was on Switch in North America. Like, that was quick. That's really cool. Yeah. I did appreciate the Japanese influence in the art style as well. Indeed. Well, it came from Japan. The uh, creators are in Japan that made that game. That's cool. So, uh, I definitely have to buy it. Uh, definitely everything that Larry owns, I have to get because Thumper is so good. That Oh, my God. That, Play Thumper. Uh, Steve, hit me I up have later. I not yet I'll, played Thumper. I will throw you some... Uh, some suggestions for stuff that's uh, worth your dollars on the Switch. And I'm still mad at you. Certainly. I'm still mad at you, Larry, for Fast uh, Racing Neo RMX. That thing is oh, just too oh, addictive. That looks very good. It's, I mean, so it's, good. It, it's a little bit floaty. It has a little bit of problems, but those it problems... It feels more like Wipeout than F-Zero. Yeah. Go into it with that expectation that you're playing Wipeout. Yeah, it... It's so addicting because it makes you want to get better. That and Dumper makes you want to get better. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, goodness. But yeah. Well, guys, I, I want to thank you so much for your time for coming back. We we immensely appreciate it. We love having you guys as friends of the show. You guys are Absolutely. wonderful, wonderful <laughs> folks to have around, and we look forward to having you back next time. And uh, with any luck, you know, uh, next time we get to see you back, um, you know, it'll be in video, and uh, maybe we'll be seeing some uh, some new content. Um, so last part of the show, the part that I'm sure every listener hates, but you know, we do as a courtesy for all of our guests, pimp your shit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> People, if you enjoyed AM2R and want to see a new, brand new Metroidvania, completely original with new charming characters, uh, uh, contents uh, may vary and results may not be, uh, as, uh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. I love, <laughs> I love yes, all of this. Rating pending. Um, make sure to follow us on at AM2R Game and uh, Mr. Saber. Oh, um, I don't have. You can follow me on Twitter on uh, Saber at Saber two three zero underscore AM two R. I think it's just going to end up staying my personal account. I'm cool with it. And then um, I'm also looking for Switch buddies because I don't have anybody to play games with. I will get you a friend code. Uh, I don't know how to friend people, so just figure it out on Twitter. Ask me on there, and then I'll find a way to friend you or something. We'll we'll get back and forth. We'll get it hashed out. Well, if you guys follow each I'll other. I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, if you guys follow each other on Twitter, just message each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll we'll get there. Um, Eddie, pimp your shit. You guys can follow me on Twitter at that retro code. You can hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast apps. I just finished my uh, weekly blog for IGN.com under Anime for Optional Opinion. Uh, the theme of it is 
Is the rising sun still shining? Like, does Japan really matter in America? So you guys can hear the podcast. Also, I got seven days worth of written work that you guys can actually check out. Um, check me out also on NGR Radio, where I do Nintendo Power Block and Arsenal X, our Xbox podcast. And, of course, Nintendo Power Block, where we talk all about Nintendo. Um, you can hear more of World 101 at ShoutEngine.com and at NGR Radio. Um, you can email the show at World 1 underscore uh, World 11 at world one one at uh, podcast at gmail dot com. Sorry about that. Um, you can also read my uh, retro series, The Moment, at uh, scourgefrost dot com, and I'll have my latest blog up for NGR Radio uh, in a couple of uh, days. I am going to be talking about um, Alex Miller and her uh, DMCA and how I feel like, feel about her extortion that she's did. Um, well, we'll be hitting on that more next week too. If uh, if you guys hadn't been here, that'd have been this week's topic actually. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's been a mess, but uh, I'm almost glad to give it another week to see if anything more comes of it before we uh, jump into that uh, fuck all disaster. Well, you know, like, OK, so Leonard French, like, is representing the uh, company. And I think the last thing I heard of that, she got save hit, it for next week. Hit. I was just saying that that was the update, so I don't know if anything <laughs> happened after that. Save it for next week. We'll go in. We'll we'll go deep on that yeah. one. Um, you um, guys uh, can check out my Let's Learn series on Twitch uh, at the Lyrical One, and if you guys want to uh, game with me, Xbox One or Xbox Live is the Lyrical One, and Okamiko is for PS4. Uh, when I get my Switch, it should be optional opinion uh, or. You, uh, for Wii U definitely and I'll put out my friend's code for my 3DS a little bit later that if you guys want to game with me so yeah that's going on oh also uh, just to uh, update everybody I am doing my uh, backlog bash blowout uh, for the uh, this two months for June and July I've been playing Dishonored 2 Star uh, Star Ocean Integrity and Faithless um, I'm going to be starting up Star Fox Zero for Wii U and uh, Dragon Quest 8 oh. and uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus uh, in, like for this month so uh, you guys can join me there if you guys want to hear more about that and then last but not least I'm sorry Larry I know this is my plug show <laughs> um, I'm getting ready to do uh, I'm getting ready to do the beauty of video games for September where this year I'm focusing more on PC, handheld and arcades and we're going to be I'm going to be discussing why we enjoy these platforms and why we love playing them and building them so you guys will be able to check writings for that that'll be for three weeks and for those podcasts with special guests so do check that out in September right on um, so before I get into the last uh, tidbit here, a little bit of uh, housekeeping and some news to uh, share with anybody listening. Um, we are officially uh, joining up with uh, NGR Radio. You can find them at ngrradio.com. Um, part of this, as I mentioned earlier, means it's an opportunity to expand uh, what we do with the show here. For anybody that likes just, you know, having the show to listen to on the car, or at work, whatever, the audio versions will continue to be available in all the places you can find them that you've always been finding them. Shout Engine, iTunes, Google Play Music, and all that other fun shit that'll be there. Um, we are, however, you know, part of this means that we're going to be able to branch into and there will be a, a video version of the show where you can kind of see everything going on. Um, we've, we've started uploading stock video versions if you will to the ngr youtube page you can uh, find all that back stuff out there but that's now available on youtube for you as well where you'll also be able to find the upcoming uh video versions of the show going forward um there's also with this means uh there's going to be some brand new content um there's some brand new stuff that uh we are working on behind the scenes we're hoping to have some uh prototype versions of some of the the new shows and the new content uh over the next week or two to share with you guys um Corey unfortunately was not able to be here tonight to be able to share this news with you guys uh Corey Derrick the uh the wonderful uh brains behind uh or the muscles at this point behind uh ngr radio helping make a lot of this happen and a big shout out to Corey for this um you know so nothing nothing that you guys like is going away it just means we're we're getting to do more shit for you um that you you may or may not like but if you don't like it you don't have to have it and if you love it and we're glad to provide it for you um 
So that's that's kind of the big exciting news. Uh, the other tidbit of housekeeping that goes with that is that um, we are going to be just to kind of consolidate and bring everything together. We are going to be shutting down the World One One Podcast Forum. So if you're looking to uh, join the conversation and join the group, um, check out the NGR Radio Podcast Forums. Everything is going to be migrating there. Um, other than that, you know the the usual. Find us at. Uh, shoutengine.com at our home there. Uh, find us on iTunes. We appreciate those uh, ratings and reviews. That definitely helps bump us up so that you can help subject more people to our bullshit. Um, also out on Google Play Music and uh, now on uh, ngrradio.com as well. Um, so stay tuned for uh, more exciting shit coming up. Um, other than that, guys, that's our show. Again, thank you so much to Milton and to Steve for coming on and joining us again. We look forward to having you back. Um, and beyond that, guys, we'll see you next week. Yes. Hey, Milton, can you uh, take us out? Uh, thank you, wonderful listeners, for this awesome evening. And uh, stay tuned for the next uh, World One One podcast. Uh, these have been very awesome people talking to the very awesome audience with very awesome guests. Awesome. Uh, Thank you very much. Good night. And uh, we will see you next time. Good night. Night. Good night.